Hello and welcome to Highline United Methodist Church for worship this first Sunday after Christmas. Let us join in worship together. God, help us to remember the awe of a child, that we may minister to you as Samuel did. Help us to cling to all knowledge and truth we find. We seek to serve thy holy will. Amen. Oh, my 
today's Bible reading, we will read about Jesus as a youth who learned at the feet of many teachers in the temple, God's house. And we'll read about the prophet Samuel as he ministered before God. Both boys dedicated themselves to serving God and learning as much as they could. Even children can do the work of God's kingdom. This blessed their parents, even though some of them couldn't see it at the time. Sometimes children see things of God that adults are too busy to notice. As each boy did this, he grew in favor with God. Good morning, church. Please join me for the scripture reading today. Uh, We'll be starting with the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today we're going to be reading from Samuel chapter 2, verses 18 through 20, and also verse 26, and then Luke 41, excuse me, Luke 2, verses 41 through 52. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went up and with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with people. Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A mother lined a basket to keep her baby dry, then wrapped him on a Awake and cry. She let a princess name him, her son that he might live. God's people had a leader, she had such hope to give. A mother sewed a jacket lined in the softest wool, then dressed her little boy child, her cup of blessing full. She brought him to the temple where he would serve and live. As people had a prophet, she had such faith to give. A mother laid her baby in manger lined with straw. Then in the shepherd's story, his call from God foresaw. She nurtured him and taught him the way that he must be. God's people had a Savior, she had such love to give. Like Jacob and Anna, and Mary too we know. The hardest part of loving is learning to let go. So when we send our children out in the world to live, Hope and faith, God, and love enough to give. Please pray with me. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture this week seems strange, just the Sunday after Christmas, but it's kind of an epiphany story. It's a revealing of Jesus as Christ, as he stays in the temple and um, teaches and learns with the, the priests. And it's a moment of Mary and Joseph learning that there is something different about Jesus and they will have to keep adjusting and learning how to be parents to this Christ child. But it also reminds us that we don't get to stay in that uh, place of innocence of the baby Jesus, that there's more to this story. We have to grow up with Jesus in our faith, in our discipleship, in how we walk this way of Jesus in the world. I'd like to share with you a poem written by Anne Weems in a book called Kneeling in Bethlehem. It's called Christmas Trees and Strawberry Summers. What I'd really like is a life of Christmas trees and strawberry summers. A walk through the zoo with a pocket full of bubble gum and a string of balloons. I'd say yes to blueberry mornings and carefree days with rainbow endings. I'd keep the world in springtime and the morning glories blooming. But life is more than birthday parties. Life is more than candied apples. I'd rather hear the singing than the weeping. I'd rather see the healing than the violence. I'd rather feel the pleasure than the pain. I'd rather know security than fear. I'd like to keep the cotton candy coming, but life is more than fingers crossed. Life is more than wishing. Christ said, follow me, and of course I'd rather not. I'd rather pretend that doesn't include me. I'd rather sit by the fire and make my excuses. I'd rather look the other way, not answer the phone, and be much too busy to read the paper. But I said yes, and that means risk. It means here I am, ready or not. Oh, Christmas trees and strawberry summers, you're what I like and you are real. But so are hunger and misery and hate-filled red faces. So is confrontation. So is injustice. Discipleship means sometimes it's going to rain in my face. But when you've been blind and now you see when you've been deaf and now you hear, when you've never understood and now you know, once you know who God calls you to be, you're not content with sitting in corners. There's got to be some hallelujah shouting, some speaking out, some standing up, some caring, some sharing, some community, some risk. Discipleship means living what you know. Discipleship means thank you, Lord, for Christmas trees and strawberry summers, and even for rain in my face. It's not Christmas Eve, and the reality of it 
is more real than I would like it to be. I came to the church today to prepare a sermon and get the video recordings done. And was met by a woman who's been sleeping on the streets and found a dry corner outside our building. I let her in to warm up when 50 degrees that our uh, thermostats are set at here at the church right now that nobody's here is warmer than outside. Her feet were wrapped with leggings that had been cut up and plastic bags tied over them. I was able to get her socks, a pair of shoes that actually fit, some dry clothes, a heavier coat, a sleeping bag, a mat for the ground, and some plastic bags. She was grateful for a bathroom to clean up in. She washed her hair. There were cleansing cloths that she was able to use. I was able to make her a cup of coffee and a cup of noodles. But when she asked if she could work and do something in order to be able to sleep inside, I had to say no. I had to sit with her and write out a map of Burien to show her all the different places she could get services on different days at different times. And she said, what day is it and what time is it? My phone has been stolen. My wallet has been stolen. I don't know what time it is. I'm not sure if she's going to be able to find the places to go to and to get there on time with no phone and no ID. And she thanked me profusely for what I was able to offer. And it leaves me wanting and needing to fight more for better housing, for better services. As we spent the two hours together getting her what she, what I could give her and getting her dry and warmed up, I heard bits of her story. She began to trust me and began to open up. This is a person who grew up in a home with adults who were more broken than put together. We don't have the systems in this country that help children know what wholeness looks like so they even know what they're striving towards. And so there's generation upon generation of broken people. And the Christ that I said yes to forces me to sit and hear these stories and allow my heart to be broken and allow my helplessness to cause me so much pain that I can leave the Christmas Eve 
loveliness of candles and carol singing for another year to work for the justice that the grown-up Jesus worked for and continues to work in us to bring forth in this time and place. We all, when we are baptized into this life with Christ, are called to grow up with Jesus. We go from that innocent baby to the 12 year old who stays behind in Jerusalem to the adult who calls disciples and gives them the instruction to feed his sheep and to continue working for the poor and the oppressed, the widowed, the sick, those with out food and water, clothing and shelter. I pray that Christ is alive in each of us. And when we all are heartbroken by the stories of the people we meet, the Christ in us gives us the energy and the will to work for the justice that will heal the people in this world. Let it be so. Amen.
please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord, Lord we, we confess, confess to you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment, and free us from sin. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, we lift up to you our siblings, our human siblings who live with mental illness, with addiction, with the pain of broken relationships. Those who have no place to live and are on the streets and are cold and hungry. Give each of us the ability to work for justice in this world in any way that we are able. Help us to advocate for change in our government systems, in how the agencies that provide aid and services work. for how the humanity of the people needing those services is real and to show dignity to each of those people. Gracious God, we lay them and ourselves before you that you may be at work in us, through us, for each other. We lift up to you the people of Nashville who have been hurt and scared by a bombing. We lift up to you those who are struggling around this globe for all those facing hardships. We humble ourselves to be a part of your kingdom and a part of the kingdom of God praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. time of worship, remember that you are a child of the Creator God, redeemed by the Christ, and led forth and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Go to be the Christ to your neighbor. Bring peace, bring love, bring joy. Go in peace. Amen.